So now that we're able to write a birthday message, we're going to automate this so it automatically refreshes uh, with the number of seconds and milliseconds. And you can see here, if I click refresh, it's going to work, but that's not really a great way to have this automatically updated. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take all of my uh, code here and I'm going to put it inside a function. So we'll call this function write countdown. We'll call, we'll create one parameter, next birthday text. And instead of using this here, we'll pass in next birthday text. We're getting a syntax error over here, but we'll ignore that for now. We'll go ahead and wrap all of this code within one function. And we can actually move all of this uh, over so that it's well formatted. If we select all of that text, and you hold in command and hit your right bracket, which is uh, up in the, close to the top right corner of your keyboard, you can move all of that over all at once, which is nice. Uh, you can also use command bracket for, uh, for Windows. But now, you notice nothing happens over here because we're not actually executing this function. So if we want to see, just test, make sure that this works right. We'll call write countdown. And since we've supplied this parameter, next birthday text, we'll go ahead and just type in 2016-09-16. Now you can see that's working just as we would expect it. So this gives us the ability now if we want to say, all right, well, maybe your birthday is July 1st. We can see how how long there is until that as well. So that's a nice little, you know, being able to provide the parameter as a, as a new value. That gives us the ability to make, make this more flexible. Let's go ahead and comment this out for now because we're going to use a new function that's in JavaScript. And this is something that JavaScript provides. Uh, so let's say we want to use or create a function called write period. And write period is just going to do one very simple thing. It's going to write out a period. Oh, document dot write. There you go. And if we call write period, it should do exactly what we say it will. One period. Not too interesting. Now we can make that more interesting using a function in JavaScript called set timeout. So set timeout gives us the ability to call a function. So in this case we'll call write period and we'll call that two seconds in the future, two thousand milliseconds. And in two seconds, we should see a period just show up. There we go. We can change this so it's a little bit longer. So now it's five seconds. You can see that will show up there. Or we can make it almost immediate, say 10 milliseconds. And that shows up really quickly. So this is nice because it allows us to say, hey, JavaScript, call this function, this function that I'm going to give you in this many milliseconds. So it allows us to kind of set something to call later, schedule some function for later. Now, this is useful, but if we want to, say, write lots of periods, we could call at the bottom of write period, set timeout, write period, and then say we'll call that every second. Now, when we call write period that very first time, what write period will do is it will write out the period, and then it will say write out the period again in one second. Call this function again in one second. And if you'll notice in the top right here, in my pane, you can see bit by bit, slowly but steadily, this is adding a new period to my, my window. So this gives me a nice ability to, uh, to sort of animate or schedule what's going on and have it uh, execute over and over and over again. If we want this to happen faster, we could say, all right, let's make that happen every 100 milliseconds. And you can see that's a bit faster. Or we could say, let's have it make it happen every 10 milliseconds, and it'll fill in really fast. So we can use this same approach to write our countdown over and over again. So if we type write countdown, and I'll go ahead and change it back to my birthday, because I like to know when that is. And if I call set timeout down here, write countdown, now I could use my birthday, 2016-09-16, here. And we'll say, we'll update this every 100 milliseconds. Well, this is going to work, but there are two problems. One problem is that no matter what I pass in now, you know, let's say if we pass in 1230, you'll notice it's still using the same thing. It's still calculating based on my birthday, so that's not great. And that's because we've inserted the, we've made the text uh, explicit here. We've said we're always going to use 916. So what we can do to change that is we can change this now to, instead of using this, we'll actually take the string we pass in which is next birthday text 
And now when we call write countdown, we're going to call that over and over again, but we're going to call it with the value that was passed in. So now we should get, you know, you can see this is three weeks. So this is this solves one problem, but the other problem, as you can see, is this just keeps updating and updating and updating and updating and updating. So what would be really great is if we could clear this out, and we can do that. We'll go ahead and create a new function, function clear document, and to clear the document out, we will just say document dot body dot enter HTML. We'll just make it empty. So we'll talk about what this does and what this means in a later lesson. But for now, we can see document.body.internet.html that's going to set this equal to a blank. And we can call that function now at the very beginning of our fun of our right countdown. And now you can see this is just counting down. So here we go, seconds. Now we get an actual countdown because we're clearing the document but writing this out in the same or the same way over and over again. What we actually get is an animated counter, and we could actually change this. So if we want it to look like it's counting down even faster, we could change that to 10 milliseconds. And now see it's spinning really fast. It's actually spinning too fast for us to even see. If we up that to you know something like 50, we should be able to see it. it should be just barely visible. We should be able to see what those numbers are. And you can see now the seconds are counting down slowly, and our minutes will count down as well. So now we have a, a truly animated uh, counter for our birthday. Uh, and we've learned a little bit about how JavaScript can schedule things in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy coding with Chrome.